So for this session, I'd like to explain on investment property. You have learned investment property in previous semester. So basically, it is um, different from PPE in terms of function. All right. Uh, basically, previously PPE uh, are those assets that use it, that is used in the production uh, of goods. Okay, or in the in the providing services of the business. Whereas for investment property, uh, the main function is basically uh, you acquire this investment property to to rent it out. Okay, this is the function of IP, or you just acquire the asset for capital appreciation. Okay, this um related to building and the land where you just bought the building and land and you just keep it um, with the hope that after several years it, it will increase in value and you can sell them so when we talk about property here it only relates to land and building okay no more than this asset land and building sahaja which refers to this property and you acquire and the function of the property is for investment which is for rental you rent out to um, third party and or maybe you just keep it for capital appreciation okay what does it mean by capital appreciation maybe uh, today you bought the asset at 10,000 for example and you keep that asset until uh, the market value shows there is an increase in the value okay maybe after like 10 years so originally you bought at 10,000 now the price is already like um, 50,000 so the difference of 40,000 is actually the capital appreciation okay um, now if if you will ask on the definition this is basically the definition Investment property is a property, land, or building, or part of the building. Part of the building means that you have uh, one uh, a huge building which have a diff uh, many levels, but maybe only part of it is IP, which is only part of it you rent it out. Okay, you put it, uh, you keep it for capital appreciation. Why? Why the top here you use it for your office? So the one that you use it for your office is the owner occupied property OOP. So it can be part of the building. It, it is not necessarily that the whole building should be recognized as IP, but depending on the situation, I will explain it. Okay. Uh, use this IP is used or acquired to earn rental or capital appreciation and not for not for use in the production or supply of good. So this one is explaining on the PPE and also or not for the sale in the ordinary course of business. This is inventory. So a complete definition should include these two items. Okay, uh, which explain if it is used in the production or supply of goods, it's, it is not IP, it is PPE. And if it is sale in the ordinary course of business, it is, investment, uh, it is inventory and it is not investment property. So... This is the complete answer for the definition. Uh, okay, now the question, is it calls for rental and IP? Of course, it is no. Even though you look here, there is a rental here. Okay, but this is not property because property is only relates to land and building. It's not about a motor vehicle. Okay, this is example. Uh, uh, investment property is... Is where you help for long-term capital appreciation rather than for short-term sale in the ordinary course of business. So you can see this from the definition. You held it for a currently undetermined future use. Yes, if you acquire the property and you do not know uh, what you want to do with the with the property. So you just keep it aside. So that is considered as IP because there is an, uh, we expect that there is a capital appreciation on the property owned by the entity and is out under one or more operating lease. Okay, uh, if you learn on leases later on, 
basically there are two types of leases one we call it as operating lease another one we call it as a finance lease finance finance lease you cannot uh, recognize uh, the property as an ip okay the, the main difference between the operating lease and finance lease is um, on the risk and reward for the o for the operating lease where you you rent out okay you uh, lease out is just like similar to rent out you lease out to to the the other party but the risk and reward is still may remain to you what does it mean by that it means that when you lease out the property what ha whatever happened to the property if there is a damage the the owner need to repair them so that that is the meaning of the 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 risk still remain with the with the company and the reward is also remain with the company uh, meaning meaning that if there is an increase in the value it is actually belong to the company not the the person who lists the asset we call it as a um, lessee okay uh different to finance lease by the word finance here it is actually um mm, relates to um financing arrangement okay so under the term of finance lease, this, this is just for your own knowledge. Uh, the term under finance lease is where uh, when we company lease out to to the customer under the finance lease. So the agreement would say that at the end of the leasing term, for example, five years, the our customer can buy can buy uh, the the lease asset. Okay, they can continue to pay uh, after deducting the five years lease rental so that will be the um, net amount that they need to continue paying to the company so under finance lease the nature is the reward, risk and reward goes to the lessee okay uh, the risk and reward goes to the client whatever happened to the asset any damage or any increase in the value then the customer can um, need to to incur those costs or they will get the benefits or any increase in the value so that is why when the ownership for the finance list goes to the customer then uh, any property that is listed out on the finance list is not allowed to be uh, recorded as an ip okay only a property that is listed out under operating then we as a company can record it as an IP, our investment property. Okay, uh, being constructed or developed for future use as IP. Okay, being constructed is basically refers to building. You build up the building. Okay, um, for future use. So this is the purpose of um, constructing the building because uh, in the future, you want to use it as an IP. Uh, you don't uh, build up an office building. Uh, you cannot consider as constructing an office building as an IP because an office building is is PPE. Okay, it is not IP. All right. So we move on. What is the example of non-investment property? Uh, now. Anything that fall under owner occupied property that means any property that is for business purposes. Okay, this will include property held to be used in future as owner occupied. You build you build the building uh, as a factory, you build the building as an office building. Property occupied by employees. Okay, employees is considered as employees as person who work in your company which is to run the business therefore anything that relates to employee will be considered as OOP uh, which is BPA so even though you have um, a building okay or house that you rent out rent out to your employees but because they are employee of the, your company they are the one who involved in the operation of the business therefore that rental uh, that property cannot be considered as an ip it will be considered as pbe okay unless you rent out to outsiders okay to the third party other than the employees okay property awaiting disposal okay non-current asset held for sale 
So this one is covered under, if I'm not mistaken, this is under MFRS 5. Okay, this is, a, this is not IP. Property currently under construction on behalf of third parties. Okay, you are a developer and you are building the, 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 the property for other person. So that's not IP. Property leads to another entity under finance list. This is one that I mentioned just now. Um, you, you can only recognize the property as an IP if it is listed out under operating, not finance. Property held for sale in the ordinary course of business. This is um, okay, clear. This is inventory. This is not IP. Now, if you were asked uh, on the example, okay, this should be your answer. Okay, what you can do is uh, sometimes the student make a mistake. What they do, uh, they give example land and building. Okay, this is not correct. Even though land and building is a property, but it does not show us whether this is actually PPE or IP. It can be, it can be PPE or it can be IP. Now, it depends on the function of this property. So you have to add some more. You should say that land that is currently land that is currently held currently held uh, currently held for undetermined. Uh, you should have this word at the end that currently held for undetermined future use. Or you should say building that is rent to third party. Okay, if you just mention land building, so you would not get any, any you won't get any un, um, <laughs> you won't get any marks. Okay, so property with dual uses, if property can be sold or leased out separately. Part rented out is classified as IP and part occupied is classified as PPE. This is talking about a building, which part of it uh, you rent out. So this one can be recognized IP and this is for op office use. So you recognize it as PPE. But in one condition, it must fulfill this condition in order to recognize the building separately that is if the property can be sold this is the condition or it can be leased out separately if it can be separately then you can recognize them separately okay so part rented out classified as IP and the part that is occupied is classified as PPE if it cannot be sold or leased out separately Therefore, the whole property is classified as IP if the part that is occupied is insignificant. What does it mean by this? It means that if you cannot sell this part, uh, okay, normally, let's give a more logic uh, example. This part is used for office. You just a small part and the other part here is uh, you rent out. So, it is basically an IP. So, should you recognize them separately or should you recognize it the whole building as IP or PPE? Now it depends. If if you cannot sell uh, if you cannot sell them separately, therefore the whole building will be treated as what? It should be depending on which use the most area. Okay, if this part is not significant, okay, not significant, the majority of the level is used as an IP, therefore the whole building will be considered as an IP. That's why here it says that the whole property is classified as an IP if the part that is occupied is insignificant. This one is refers to the OOP, the one that you use for office. Okay, so if this part is not significant, just a small room, okay, and you, you are not able to identify what is the value, you cannot sell them. Therefore, the whole building will be re regarded as an IP. Okay? So, same goes to PPE lah. If, let's say, uh, you have a whole building, so only part here you, you rent out. Okay, you rent out this part and majority of the building is the OOP used for office. So, if they cannot be sold separately, of course, the, the entire building will be recognized as PPE. Okay?
if it cannot be so separately so you check which okay which function is is the majority is it the, the one used for business or is it the one that you rent out okay property within a group property owned by a group and occupied by the parent or subsidiary it should be classified as PPE so you have a parent company you have a subsidiary okay so property owned by a group and occupied by the parent by the parent this is the parent or by the subsidiary okay so this is considered as in the same business okay so you that's why you cannot classify it as uh, PPE in the consolidated consolidated means uh, reporting all figures for the parent and the subsidiary okay which is group lah it refers to group financial statement it should be classified as PPE but for that particular uh, company okay it will be recognized as investment property if if you are parent company you rent out to your subsidiary so the financial statement of the parent itself is IP or if this uh, subsidiary rent out to another subsidiary so he will declare as IP but when you prepare uh, the financial statement for a group okay that will be considered as PPE okay all right this is the recognition criteria <coughs> similar to the PPE and IA you recognize the property as an IA when there is a probable future economic benefit flow into the entity and the cost can be measured reliably. So it's just similar to PPE and IA. Okay, um, the initial measurement will be at cost, so we call it as initial cost. Okay, the first time you acquire the asset, and the cost could include. Uh, cost include the initial cost incurred when you first acquired and any subsequent cost incurred to add to replace part of or service to a property. So just like your PPE lah, we have a subsequent cost that you incur on the asset. So you need to know whether you should capitalize or expense off. So the today servicing cost repair and maintenance are not recognized in its current amount. In other words, these are these are all will be written off into SOPL. Okay, all right. The initial measurement, okay, it include um, cost, uh, purchase price, any directly attributable and directly uh, include professional fees for legal services, property transfer tax and other transaction costs. Okay, um, property that held under finance lease, help, yeah. Help means that um, you are the lessee. Uh, you are the customer. You are the customer. You lease from another company. Okay. So when you held that under finance lease, the lower of fair value and the present value of the minimum payment. So this will be your measurement. Okay. Remember just now, um, when uh, you as a company, when you rent out, when you lease out to another person, you can only recognize it as an IP. Okay. When you lease out, under operating lease, you can only recognize if it is operating lease. Okay, if you are the company, you are the lessor. The property is belong to you, and you um, this out to your customer. Okay, so operating lease. So you you as a company, you recognize it as your IP. But if you are the company, you lease out under finance lease. So your customer will recognize it as IP. See the difference when you lease out, when you are our company, you lease out under operating lease, you recognize it as an IP. But if you are a company, you lease out under finance lease, you don't recognize it as an IP. But your customer will recognize it as an IP. And the measurement, if you, if your customer want to record it, the measurement would be the lower of fair value and the present value of the minimum payment. Okay, which one is the lower? Okay. Now, this is the subsequent measurement. If for PPE, for PPE, the subsequent measurement would be the cost model 
for the revaluation model. That is for PPA. And also IA. But for IP, okay, cost model is same. But this one, we call it as a fair value model. Alright. So basically, when you do the calculation between the revaluation and the fair value, basically, they will use the same figure, which is fair value, compare with the carrying value. For fair value model, we also compare the fair value and compare with the carrying value. Similar, right? But uh, in terms of treatment, it's different. The difference here will be surplus or deficit for the revaluation model. But for fair value model, the difference is either gain or loss on fair value. So don't make a mistake when you answer. Uh, put them properly whether it is a surplus or it's gain depending on whether it is a PPIA or it's IP. So for this one, surplus goes into ARR, right? Deficit goes into SOPL but this one depends whether it is a first time revaluation or a subsequent revaluation you have learned that you know when you need to use the previous one okay but for uh, this one is much simpler fair value model is where um, it will be treated as gain or loss so if it is gain then it goes into SOPL under revenue if it is a loss it also goes into SOPL under expenses okay the treatment is similar uh, here, fair value more than carrying value, it is surplus. So for here, fair value model, fair value is more than carrying value. We call it as gain. Okay. And a model once chosen must be applied to all of its IP. Now, what does it mean by that? When you, when you learn PPE, you have property, you have machinery, equipment. So these different type of classification of asset, they may have a different method of measurement property may be used revaluation model machine may be used the cost model equipment may be used the, the revaluation model they could uh, different okay um, but within the class the classification must be same but between classification either is property machine equipment it can be different but for IP once you choose fair value model it applies to all your IP, which is uh, all your land and property that you rent out or you keep it for capital appreciation. Okay, so either one, fair value model or cost model. And the best part about um, IP is that uh, for cost model, of course, um, you depreciate your asset. That is a cost minus accumulated depreciation minus accumulated impairment loss. But, but for fair value model, there is no depreciation. So I, I do like this, met, this model. Okay? As compared to uh, revaluation under PPE, whether it is a cost model or revaluation model, both are depreciated right? or amortized. Okay? If it is IA, you amortize. Both methods, you need to do this. But for IP, fair value model, there is no depreciation. Remember that. Okay, a voluntary change is made only if the change result in the financial statement provide reliable and more relevant information about the effect of the transaction. It means that you can change uh, originally, you choose cost model and you have applied the cost model for so long and you think that uh, it's time for you to change it to fair value model because it will you'll be able to produce a better result in financial statement or maybe... Um, the, the information that you disclose in the financial statement is more relevant to your investor therefore you want to change it uh, then that is allowed but once you change it um, you have to consistently use it for some time bef if before you want to change it back to cost model okay of course you need to have a reason when you're switching the the, the model okay under the cost model Okay, you are aware of this, you just depreciate your asset. So under the cost model, just like your PPE, cost model means that you will ignore the fair value. Okay, uh, whether it is PPE, it is IA or it is IP, when you talk about cost model, so you will ignore the fair value, even though it is given in the question. 
Okay, for the fair value model, this is where um, <coughs> the amount for which an asset could be exchanged between eligible willing parties in an arm net. Okay, this is basically the definition. So the fair value is basically the market value. Okay, what is the price that can be sold? Okay, all right. Any gain or loss arising from the change in the fair value is recognized in the um, in the in the SOPL. Okay, this is the old term. So if the fair value is more than the current value, this is gain gain on fair value. If is if the fair value is smaller than the carrying value, this is a loss on fair value. Do not mistakenly write this as a surplus or the half a C you won't get any mark. Okay, zero. Okay, so a willing buyer is motivated but not compelled to buy at any price. A willing seller is not over eager, not, not forced to sell at any price. Not one who is prepared to hold out for a price that considered reasonable in current market condition. This is online. Okay, so this is basically the, the meaning of fair value model. Okay. Mm. Alright, so we can skip that. Okay, this is uh, inability to determine the fair value. If the fair value of the IP under construction is not reliably determinable because um, the second condition of the recognition is the cost can be measured reliably. So if you cannot identify the fair value reliably, then you need to use the cost model. Okay, the cost model until either is fair value reliable, uh, reliably de determinable or construction is completed. If the fair value is not reliably determinable, even after construction, then the property should be measured on the cost model. So it's very straightforward. Uh, if you don't have the fair value, then you just use the cost model. So if the fair value of an IP is not reliably determinable on a continuing basis, so the cost model in um, FRS 116 should be used. Okay? Nothing weird about that. You don't have fair value, you use the cost model. Okay, this is... Uh, you have to understand uh, about this part. This is a transfer to or from IP. Okay, this is basically um, your main uh, your main concern should be uh, originally uh, the property is used for the office business. It is owner occupied property. Okay, in other words, it is PPE. But now, for example, you have a factory. Okay, where you use it for your business. But later on. Um, you don't need the factory anymore. You don't need the warehouse. Or maybe you have an office building and you need to close them and you need to rent out. So when the function when you when the function change from from the business use to rent or capital appreciation, that means there is a change of use, therefore there is a transfer from the PPE to IP, or maybe it can be a transfer from IP to PPE. And also it can happen uh, transfer as an inventory. Okay, a uh, transfer happen when there is a change of use. Okay, so what happened? IP a transfer to PPE. Okay, uh, PPE originally it is an office. You transfer it as an IP. You leave. You just leave it there. Um, you don't. You don't intend to use it, uh, for your business, or maybe you rent it out. So there is a change in use or maybe it's a change from IP to inventory. So the one that you need to can be more concerned is on this two part. Okay, where it will involve calculation. Okay, what about disposal? So if IP is eliminated from the SOAP, okay, from the SOAP. Uh, on disposal by sale or by entering into a finance list okay when you dispose your asset or when when um, you enter into a finance list so therefore you will treat them as a disposal when it is permanently withdrawn from use that means uh, you don't use it anymore okay completely permanently withdrawn from use okay the difference between the net proceed and the carrying amount gain or loss is recognized. Okay, this is the treatment for the disposal. Uh, you should remember. Composition from third party for IP that have been impaired, lost or given up are recognized in the income statement when receivable. Okay, 
So this is disclosure whether the fair value model or cost model has been applied. Okay, what, what is the one that is chosen by your company? You need to disclose that in your annual report, in your financial statement. Okay, um, so if it is a fair value model, then you have to show the reconciliation of the carrying amount at the beginning and at the end of the period. If you, if you use the cost model, then you have to mention, you have to disclose what is the depreciation method used, the useful life of the asset, the gross carrying amount, and the accumulated depreciation. Okay, this, uh, this information is not required when you adopt the fair value model because depreciation um, is, is not calculated under fair value model. Okay, and then another information criteria is it uses to distinguish IP from the OOP. Okay, what, what make you say that this property is your IP? So you have to mention uh, like for example, this um, building is rented out to third parties. Okay, this building is, is keep for, for future uses and IP. You have to be very specific why you see that, that the one you declare as IP is actually belong under IP. Method and assumption used to determine the fair value and because we are concerned about costs can be identified reliably, therefore you need to tell how how and what are the assumptions that you use to determine the fair value. And the rental income, operating expenses and the changes in fair value, you also need to uh, disclose it in your financial statement. So that is all for IP basically. Thank you very much.